Hey everyone, today we're going to be taking Flux to a whole nother level. Yeah, there's a million videos out there that just do basic install, but today we're going to be talking about custom composition, in painting, quick fixes, an amazing new Flux model that just came out that makes setup even easier, a super helpful Flux style guide, and even a bonus expression tweaker. So thanks as always for sharing, liking, subscribing, and let's get to it. Okay, to begin, Flux is amazing at doing composition by itself. So I don't want to discount the fact that sometimes you just want to roll the dice and get a beautiful picture out of it. That being said, as media creators, we want to be able to have some control into where our characters are going to be, what the scene looks like, etc. And so a few of these techniques are going to be helpful for you to have a little more control into creating your imagery. So to begin, we're going to start actually with SDXL and lean into Flux. So we start with a background. I've created some ground stones with a cornfield, kind of a general background. Uh, and I'm basically going to be creating kind of a like mini fight scene. And then I go down here and I'm just creating my characters. Now, these don't have to be very detailed. You can see I have eight steps, five steps, etc. because you just are laying out the general composition, you don't need the fine details because that's what Flux is going to do. And so at eight steps, right, you could see you have a ninja, not super detailed, but that's again fine. And in this case, I'm using Dino to just quickly do an automatic mask. And I'm going to layer that using my layer. So I'm basically doing my anything everywhere, as we've seen in previous videos to do layering. Uh, I'm going to do that with a second character, uh, kind of a butterfly. So we're doing kind of like a mythical uh, uh, fight here. And uh, again, only a few steps, right? We're going to do a uh, max of, I think, around eight steps here. And again, going to line it up and do the layering. So if I jump to my layer area, you can see I start with my ninja uh, and I've layered onto my butterfly. Uh, and I've done a little bit of positioning to make sure that it kind of lines up the way I want. Now, I want the end scene, of course, much more beautifully vivid and robust. Uh, but for easy, quick composition, this is it, right? And this should take, you know, only, I don't know, 10, 20 seconds or so uh, to get your first couple of subjects in. Again, the point is that you have the control over the composition. You could easily set up a single prompt in Flux and, and describe it, and it'll be, again, a, an amazing shot with a ninja and a butterfly and a fight, maybe even in a cornfield. However, the positioning and how you want it to lay out stylistically is not going to be uh, at your control, right? You're going to have to basically trust the, uh, the engine to do it. In this case, we're going to, again, influence that change. And, you know, side note, by the way, this is, of course, before actual control net is coming out, right? There was just an alpha for Canny that just came out. Uh, recently, but it's still kind of being tested. So it's really at the cutting edge right now. So in the meantime, these are techniques that will work really well. So after I've uh, created my layering here, I'm basically bringing it down here. And if I go down here further, right now I'm getting into my flux. Now, the key piece to keep in mind is I took my uh, very rough layout and I'm doing a VAE encode and I'm taking that latent, right? I'm basically doing my own little canvas here, and I'm putting that into, I'm piping that into the flux renderer. So by doing so, you're now heavily influencing the kind of initial canvas or initial starting point for what your end uh, is going to look like. Now, the actual uh, loadout, right? I'm using the dev uh, version of flux, uh, all the normal stuff, right? And I have my final description of what I want it to look like. And here's the key piece, the denoise, right? Normally your denoise is at 1.0 because you're just letting AI do it fully. Here, you're gonna play with this as you normally would with any image to image or you know, side of uh, modification. And so in this case, what worked best for me was about 50%, again, a little more control, a little less control, you are gonna be able to um, influence that. Additionally, you can see right now the sword here is nice and clean, uh, even though I have uh, 
you know, I want it to be kind of like this bloody silver metal sword. So one other thing you can do is you can modify your kind of pre-rendering uh, image here. So if I go here and I just use even photo P to do a little bit of modification, I might want to just, you know, use my brush. I'm going to maybe add a little bit of red here and not too much, right? Just a little bit to kind of get the, the sense of what's going on, right? And when you do that, then of course, you can see it's gonna bring it down and that'll be part of the render. And as you can see now, as I zoom in, right? We have a little bit of blood on the sword. So, you know, this is a, a pretty amazing technique to be able to get some details. Now, another power technique is you might like this uh, overall composition, but it's not quite to the level of detail yet that you want in terms of cleanliness or, or just overall polish. So, you know, we're doing 25 steps on dev for flux, which is pretty good. But what we learned was you can pipe your end image into your large refiner, your Bodhi, and now reprocess it again. Now you're using as a model all of your flux stuff. So this is your model for flux, your clip for flux, your VAE for flux, everything is flux coming in. If you mix and match, right, because we were playing with SDXL before, uh, it will give you an error. So you do want to keep it consistent. Okay, and one other thing to note also, because you're using your flux model in here, you don't have to do the full 10 steps or you know 15 steps that you may want to do uh, with an SDXL with Bodhi uh, to do the refining. Instead, you only need to do about two or three steps, and that really is going to be enough polish to get it done. So once it's all finished, then you're good to go. But this is a really great technique to be able to uh, heavily influence the composition of your images in Flux. Okay, on to the next example. We're going to go into inpainting. Now, the setup for this is going to be pretty much the same, right? We have our kind of Flux setup. And uh, you can see here I have a kind of colonial uh, situation with uh, you know, a colonial person holding a uh, cell phone. And of course, you know, General Cornwallis is a skibbity toilet. Now you can see the text here is pretty messed up and we have a, an option to show you what you can do to fix that as well. But the key piece here is about in painting. So we're going to make this the ultimate insult by making uh, the picture have a clown face. So if we see here, uh, I've gone through and I've you know bypassed the uh, Bodhi uh, stage in this case. Um, I've created you know just a very basic mask, and there's two different methods for in painting that we're going to use. Uh, one is uh, a little faster. Uh, it is using the in paint model conditioning. So this is all native stuff. You don't have to download anything special. And when you use this node, it's going to allow you to do your normal in-painting because it's only going to focus on the area that you mask, just like you normally would with in-painting. If you try to do this without that in-paint model conditioning, it's going to try to do the entire image, uh, which is not what you want. So uh, in terms of the actual setup, uh, beyond uh, using Flux Guidance, which I used for no my normal rendering as well for Flux, um, you can see the sampler is bringing in all the normal elements. Uh, in terms of number of steps, you know, I found keeping it at roughly the same, you know, 20 steps for dev or four steps for Schnell uh, is going to be very effective. However, just like before, we're going to want to play with the denoise. More denoise is obviously more control to the AI, less and less. So in this case, we want it pretty significantly altered. And so I did 80%, which is quite a bit. Uh, but you can see I kept the rest of the scene the same, but we have a lot of you know, clown makeup on this uh, image. Um, and then again, we're going to show you how to have some tweaks here to, to get the rest of the text if it's not uh, working uh, right. Um, so this is a pretty effective way. This is actually faster than the other method. So I want to feature that first. But the second way to do it, we're again using the same sort of mask, uh, is using mask to segs in the detailer. So if you turn your mask and pipe it into mask to segs, that will then pipe into your detailer 
and this is the same as the face detailer as we've done before in other videos uh, your source image is coming in here your segs which is coming from your mask is going into here again all these are coming from your flux uh, elements so your flux model clip VAE, etc and if we look at the details of the detailer again denoise you'll want to play with um, and uh, it does again take a little bit longer not significantly uh, but a little bit longer but you can also see that the uh, amount of change is a lot more uh, you get a significant change in the effect that you're looking for so again there's two different sort of techniques to allow you to, to get the most of the end painting okay on to our third example occasionally you'll want to get text or tweaks to your image that you'll want to uh, change uh, without really doing a full in painting or you you may want to just again make little fixes here and there uh, I found this to be effective even for just painting the canvas and so in this scene I have a butterfly by a waterfall etc with the text bubble dreams now as you see bubble dreams came out great except the colors are a little funky right so we're not getting a full color D and not full color M uh, and I want to fix that so what I did was I have that in my bridge here I just used Photopea to do a little cloning and a little bit of painting so if I go here into Photopea right you're basically going just using paintbrush to color uh, and clone the area that I want and saving that node and similar to what we just did with the kind of image to image we're now piping that fixed kind of rudimentary image into VAE back into your normal flux uh, process right so you're just doing a secondary flux render uh, key point again around the denoise so the more change the more less change the less and uh, I'm keeping the steps pretty low here as well you also have the ability to play with the guidance right your conditioning amount um, that can make it sharper a little more vivid it all really depends on the effect you're trying to go for your image but you could see final result it's all the colors each letter is its own color which is what I was looking to do great okay next I wanted to talk about a new model that literally just came out by Afro man he is a wizard at new models and I think he may be the very first to do a flux uh, model combo so he's using this demon core which previously was the SXL uh, top 10 model and you can see he's combining it with flux now that here's the benefits and a little bit of drawback from my own testing uh, in terms of pros you don't need all the normal setup that you would for a flux uh, sort of setup right normally you need to do uh, multiple clips right if I go to my other one here right you have to load multiple clips in you have to blend them etc uh, in this case it's a regular uh, model so you just use your normal load checkpoint um, I did use the uh, basic scheduler here uh, and a just a normal Euler simple sort of setup uh, he used I believe a combination of dev and Schnell you really can get that four or five step render but the benefit is the demon core had really strong skin characteristics so you have a really strong uh, skin factor which is a slight detriment to just the normal flux dev model so it's really great that you know when you combine the two and you get a much quicker render but you're not losing any sort of skin details so you could see in this case I did kind of a realistic horror uh, close-up and with a zombie and you know text and so it does the great text it also does a lot of the multiple elements that flux does very well uh, but you also get really great skin characteristics as well so um, definitely recommend taking a look in fact I did a little bit of uh, play with getting almost like a, a comic book sort of uh, uh, feel you have lots of different stylistic choices um, in flux as well speaking of styles is an amazing gallery that enraged antelope had created recently called the flux style gallery and I'm going to include all the links as usual in the description but essentially uh, if you use the mile high styler uh, which I use all the time uh, you have here every single style that's in the mile high styler uh, but lined up with the same exact prompt and same seed so you can see exactly what it's going to kind of look like stylistically 
And you can include that in your prompts uh, in your Mount High Styler when you're doing your prompting. So you can see there's a lot of different sort of uh, looks and feels depending on what you're wanting. And you know you can go on and on and on. There's, of course, lots of pages and pages and pages. Um, but you'll find your favorites from here, and then you'll be able to uh, you know use them in the future for anything you're creating. OK, here's our bonus. Uh, so sometimes you'll create an image. And it's great, but you know sometimes the expressions of the characters are really not what you want them to. They're either flat expressive, they don't really have the uh, you know either the angling of their heads or faces that you would want. And so uh, this has been a challenge for quite some time. Uh, you could do a little bit with face detailer with some expressions. You could do a little bit of prompting as well, uh, but. You know, I find that sometimes you'll get just right, and except the face is not what you want it to be, and it's a real pain to try to figure out what to do. So there is a new uh, node set out there. Uh, it is called Advanced Live Portrait. This is different than the normal live portrait where you're doing video head talking. Um, and it's very, very quick. You basically can bring this in, and you can batch it as well. You bring in your image into the expression editor. You can see in this expression editor, there's a whole bunch of different parameters that you can tweak up and down. And again, I like to just drag left and right to change the values. But you know, in terms of what their mouth is doing, right? An ah sound, an e sound, a woo sound, you know, are they smiling, are they not? And you can see I just kind of made this guy winking and looking to the right. And you know, you obviously have a lot of control, but you can see how significantly uh, you can change their facial expressions and even facial positioning uh, with this uh, quick and easy tool. So I definitely recommend this. This is a very quick tool to get you where you want. I did notice, just to be fully transparent, um, there is a little bit of softness to the end result. Like if I look here, it's a very sharp face. Here, it's a little bit on the soft side. Um, however, uh, when you're dealing with very large images or if you do some upscaling, I think you can definitely... Uh, solve for that as well. So hope this was all helpful. Lots going on with Flux. Um, definitely continue to recommend taking a look at it. It's a significantly powerful, uh, uh, call it sub-platform almost, of, of Stable Diffusion because it really is very different than how uh, we've done it before. As always, please feel free to like, share, subscribe with all your friends. And otherwise, we will talk to you soon.